Hello, buddy. Welcome back to the Tin Man's Corner Channel. I'm your host, Jeffrey Tin Man Taylor, and today I'll be reacting to six most disturbing abandoned accounts caught on camera by Chilling the Scares. Now, this is technically the second one that he uploaded with the same title. I already reacted to the first one, so let's see what people filmed in abandoned buildings in this video that are disturbing. So I'm going to turn the lights off, move the camera up here for you guys, and let's get this reaction on the road and in the bag. <laughs> Urbex Hill is one of the most popular urban exploration channels on YouTube, featuring raw footage from YouTuber Chris Hill's visits to a lot of the more extreme abandoned buildings in the U.S. From abandoned mental hospitals to decommissioned military facilities, Chris explores all of it, but specifically places that a lot of even the more extreme explorers wouldn't visit, at least not at night and alone like Chris always does. He talked about him in his uh, first abandoned building counters video in january 2023 he uploaded footage of his visit to the now abandoned paul revere elementary school in cleveland after almost a century of use the school was permanently closed in 2015 due to declining enrollment numbers although there are allegedly plans to turn the abandoned building into a housing complex as of 2024 paul revere elementary is still abandoned and in terrible shape from the moment Chris walks inside, it's pretty clear that the place hasn't been used in years and has been severely damaged by the elements, vandals, and the passage of time. The bottom floors are all flooded, the walls are peeling, the structure doesn't seem too sound, and there's rust, random papers, books, and all kinds of debris lying everywhere. Throughout the video, you can see messages written in seemingly fresh chalk on some of the whiteboards, confirming that people have been in the building recently. This was actually Chris's second visit to Paul Revere Elementary. When he uploaded footage of his March 2022 visit to the school, several people in the comments mentioned they had either been students or teachers at the school and talked about how incredibly sad it was to see their beloved childhood school ruined by abandonment and lack of maintenance. A little after 10 minutes into the exploration, you can hear some sort of ruffling sounds and other strange noises coming from somewhere in the schoolhouse. Uh... If I was a contractor, I would look at this place and be like, all right, here's your options. I could either spend the money and refurbish this place back into a functioning school or apartment houses, like you just said, or we're going to have to tear this whole place down and build something new from the ground up because there's too many rust walls peeling up and everything. I mean, that's basically what I see in this video. I don't think it wouldn't be a sorry loss to tear it down. Now, if it was a school of historic significance, then yes, I'll try to fight and fix it up into maybe a school museum or something. You never know. They should do that instead of turning it into an apartment house. But hey, that's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. What? As Chris turns a corner in the hallway, another person's flashlight can be seen shining down the hall. It looks to be just one person, who was likely either another urban explorer or a squatter. Still, at 1am in an abandoned building, it's obviously best to avoid drawing unwanted attention to yourself, especially when you don't know the other person's intentions, which is why Chris ultimately decided to run instead of making his presence known. Making sure to walk in the other direction to avoid running into anyone, he then heads to the library and explores the rest of the top floors. As he goes into the bathroom on the top floor, he has another encounter. Well, hey, um, I would do that too if I saw somebody walking towards my direction with a light on. I'm 
not going to see who that is unless they make their presence known first. And then I say, oh, yeah, my name is uh, such and such, you know, to start a conversation. But if it's somebody like a mentally disturbed person, I ain't going to bother with them. I'm just going to turn my light off and hide until they pass me and then go either upstairs or out of the building. But he did the smart thing. Now let's see what else he finds or come across. Oh, crap. Is that nice in there? At the far end of the bathroom, what appears to be a human silhouette can be seen standing completely motionless. After yeah. <laughs> I saw that too. I said, I hope that guy just don't start running. That'll make me jump. <laughs> but if it's just standing like that, it's probably a dummy to scare people. But I don't know why it was somebody set up a dummy in an abandoned bathroom. After the initial shock of the encounter, Chris draws his gun and goes back inside to confront the man. Hello. Don't go in there. I swear, if he jumps around that corner. Oh. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> when it fell over, guys, it just made me jump. I thought he was actually going to run after him <laughs> but I, I said it was a dummy uh, he said it's a toy but I don't know why somebody would do that and just set it up to scare somebody oh it's a f toy I'm, I don't go in there oh my god that scared the out of me or scared the crap out of me kind of as it turns out, the silhouette was actually a scary mannequin that somebody set up, probably to scare away visitors. What's most eerie is that even though we can't know for sure how long the mannequin had been standing there before the footage was shot, for some reason it fell forward just in time for Chris to see it, the most reasonable explanation being from the sound waves bouncing off the wall. Most people would have left as soon as they saw the mannequin, but Chris continued to explore the rest of the school, seemingly unmoved by the horrifying experience he just went through though not before clearing the entire rest of the bathroom. Sadly, some of the rooms in the school are filled with books, whiteboards, and other perfectly usable materials that could have been donated to another school before the building was abandoned. But nobody seemed to care enough to give them away before the school was abandoned. About half an hour into the visit, Chris climbs up to the roof, which in itself is pretty risky. Even if you don't care about getting caught by the cops, there's still a very high risk of the roof caving in, especially considering the state of the building when the footage was shot. Fortunately, he was able to climb down safely, but that's when a strange noise could be heard coming from the other end of one of the hallways. Safe is still here. What's in it? I heard that it sounded like somebody going, woo! As Chris explores one of the rooms, a strange howl can be heard in the distance, and as he raises his camera, you can clearly see a shadow moving behind the door at the far end of the room. By this point, it's oh. pretty clear that not only are multiple other people in the building with him, but now he's possibly being stalked. Once again, Chris draws his gun and prepares for an encounter, but he doesn't find anyone in any of the rooms. After this, he admits he's ready to call it a night and decides to head home, but not before this final encounter. Hey, I'm with you, buddy. Get out now while you can before somebody tries to attack you. You know, when he's going around corners like this, I'm expecting to see somebody jump out of somewhere. But luckily that ain't happening yet. Hopefully not. Run, 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 go. Hello. Dude, don't go up there. Go. 
<laughs> Got your gun. Hello? What? Okay, I know I heard somebody coming down these stairs. I'm out. Yeah, that's right. Get out. As he struggles to find his way out of the school, the sound of footsteps can be clearly heard on the stairway directly above Chris's head. But after running up and calling out to see if he gets a response, nobody acknowledges him. Luckily, he was able to walk away unharmed and has continued to upload videos of his visits to abandoned places pretty frequently. Like I said, you hear noises? Just get out. Don't investigate him any further because you never know. It might be a guy with a weapon or just some crazy mental disturbed person. You never know. And plus, you never know. The, 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 they said the roof was probably caving in in some area, so it might have been pieces of roof hitting the staircase. You never know. The Proper People is an urban exploration channel owned by Brian and Michael, two friends who travel the world in search of abandoned buildings. For the past 10 years that their channel has been active, Brian and Michael have built up a reputation for being a trustworthy channel that only uploads genuine footage of their explorations. In a niche of YouTube that's often plagued by cheap, fake footage from people trying to get their 15 minutes of fame, The Proper People has endured as one of the most reliable channels in the urbex space. They gained their fame from explorations of genuinely cool places instead of faking creepy encounters or anything of the such. I would like to know where this place is at with all the big airplanes and this amusement park ride stuff. But one thing's for sure, this bridge, I'll be scared to walk on right here because it looks like it goes right down to a river. <laughs> but hey, the bridge looks secure. I'll trust it. In 2016, they uploaded a video of their nighttime visit to the Jemison Center in Northport, Alabama, often referred to as Old Bryce Hospital. From 1939 to 1977, the Jemison Center housed hundreds of psychiatric patients and acquired a reputation for treating them pretty harshly. Often referred to as the creepiest building in Alabama, Old Bryce was closed in the late 70s and has since been reclaimed by nature and become a hotspot for urban explorers from all over the world. Okay, um, seeing it just go away like this right here. If I want to explore a place like that, I'm taking a machete just to clear all the brush that's hanging down right here. And, you know, baseball bat and some other stuff because you never know what type of animal or crazy human would be in there. As Michael and Brian approach the location in their car, there doesn't seem to be anyone around. And after driving around the grounds for a while, the two YouTubers get out of their vehicle to begin exploring, settling on the basement as the first area to explore. After more than four decades of abandonment, the entire complex is almost completely destroyed. And while some of the walls are completely covered in all kinds of graffiti, some of them aren't even there anymore. With the state of disrepair of the Jemison Center, there's always a chance that the structure could collapse on itself and trap Brian and Michael inside. But as they go up the stairs to explore the top floor, it becomes clear that an unsound structure is the least of their worries. Oh, look at this. Look at this staircase out here. Look. There's somebody there. No way. I didn't see nobody. I see that light. They're out there. I swear on my life. Right there. There. Should I say hello? Yeah. There's somebody out there. Let's go back to the car. This way. Did yeah. somebody want to talk to us? Let's go to the car now. What? As the camera pans to the window, the outline of a person holding up a light can be seen on the staircase on the opposite side of the building. Now I see him right there. I was looking around and I was like, where? I don't even see him and until he just mentioned where he was at right there. And that's probably like his camp or something. You never know. Disturbingly, as soon as the uploaders turn off their light, the other person does the exact same thing, indicating they were watching and didn't want to be spotted. 
chillingly, if you rewind the footage to when the YouTubers arrived at the top floor, you can clearly see a light outside the window frame, but it's unclear if the light was coming from the same person who was watching them. After calling out and receiving no response, Brian and Michael decide to go back to their car to avoid getting jumped or worse. It's hard to know what exactly the intentions of the other person were, but what's even more disturbing is the fact that there were no other cars in the area when they arrived and when they left, which means that whoever was there had arrived on foot and probably been there for a while. Hey, they were smart enough to leave while they could. I mean, I'd be doing the same thing if uh, the guy don't respond to me. I'd say, I am leaving. Because that person might have ill intentions. Ridgely Hospital was a woman's psychiatric hospital in Lancaster, UK, that operated for almost 100 years. A place like this, if I had the money, I would turn this place into a mansion because I'm not kidding, because there's uh, that show you live in what? There was an episode where this family bought an old... um abandoned mental hospital. That's one way of reusing a old abandoned property as an actual living facility or turn it into a historical museum site, you know, like get everything inside and out restored and put artifacts from that time uh, when it was open. From 1916 to 2013, Famous for being one of the first psychiatric hospitals in the UK that fought for the humane treatment of mentally ill patients, Ridgely Hospital housed thousands of patients and used modern treatment methods such as electroconvulsion therapy to help patients with a range of disorders, from severe depression to obsession to mania. In April 2022, a YouTuber Exploring with Tom visited the site with three of his friends in the middle of the night. Throughout their visit, they were extremely loud and not aware of their surroundings, which is obviously not the best idea when exploring an abandoned building. Keep in mind that most of these abandoned buildings are still considered government property, which makes it illegal to trespass and explore the grounds. Still, if you disturb a hostile squatter's home by being obnoxiously loud, getting arrested would probably be the least of your worries. <laughs> After hearing some strange noises coming from one of the rooms, the four explorers call out to see if there's anyone in the building, and this is where things get a little disturbing. <laughs> What? Hey, whoever's operating that light, keep it on steady, not flashing. And also, like Chillin' Scare said, if you're just roaming, you should let your presence be known, but not like yelling and other stuff. And if you just run up on the squatter's room, they're going to do everything in their power just to get you out of there, even try to chase you out. So I'm glad these guys decided to flee while they can. Man, what the? As soon as one of the teenagers calls out, a man can be heard screaming from inside the room. Without thinking twice, Tom and his friends make a run for it back to their car, but disturbingly, the man isn't satisfied with just scaring them out of the building and ends up chasing them all the way to their car. It's unknown who the man was or what he wanted from them. But one of the theories that's been echoing in the comments is that he was probably a homeless person who got upset at the amount of noise Tom and his friends were making. It's probably not too pleasant to have four rowdy teenagers burst into the abandoned building you call your home and start yelling, laughing, and swearing. But still, it's good they were able to get away unharmed. I mean, yeah, if I was camping there, I'd be kind of upset if somebody just wandered right in and they kept cussing, uh, yelling, laughing, and other stuff and not taking, you know, exploring seriously. 
I'll be asking them what do they want, and it'll be like, if you want to explore the place, that's fine. Just don't bother my quarters. And then leave, okay? In 2006, a 36-year-old man named Vincent Filia was living in the woods as a fugitive near Lugoff, South Carolina, after being accused of abusing his stepdaughter. In September of that same year, he saw a 14-year-old girl named Elizabeth Schoff getting off the school bus and decided to abduct her. Posing as a police officer, Filia arrested Schoff on a supposed marijuana charge and led her to his hideout in the middle of the woods. For 10 days, Elizabeth was chained up and abused by Filia in the underground bunker beneath the hideout in what can only be described as a nightmare come true. Still, the girl was extremely resilient throughout the whole ordeal and came up with a plan to escape from the horrifying situation she found herself in. If she wanted to escape, Elizabeth knew that she had to get Vincent to like her. For several days, she pretended to be in love with Filia, and eventually the kidnapper lowered his guard, even unchaining her and allowing her to play games on his phone. One night, while Vincent was sleeping, the teenager got a hold of his phone and sent a text to her mom saying she was in a hole across the charm hill, that there was a bomb, and to call the police. As it was later revealed, Filia had planned to draw in as many people as possible to the bunker to detonate a bomb and take the lives of the responding officers. However, he never managed to carry out his plan. For just a few minutes later, the area was surrounded by helicopters, and he was forced to surrender. To make a long story short, Elizabeth was able to move on with her life, and the monster named Vincent Filia spent the rest of his life in prison, where he died in 2021 in his cell. In December 2023, a YouTuber named Big Banks visited the abandoned hideout where the terrifying crime took place. Immediately upon entering the house, the uploader finds something extremely disturbing. I'm glad that girl was able to, you know, outwit the um, kidnapper and get the cops to come and rescue her. And I'm also glad that she's now living a more peaceful life now. But also that um, that guy got arrested, but uh, he died in prison. But I know he's probably going to be answering for what he'd done in life. I think this was the little girl's backpack that was left here what a sad sight to see knowing that that happened a little girl's backpack can be seen on the floor outside the kitchen although it's impossible to confirm if it belonged to elizabeth shelf it is possible that it was planted there after the crime by somebody else as he explores the living room, the uploader finds more creepy stuff, including a DVD of the horror movie The Strangers, a Halloween decoration next to one of the couches, a shank, a broken baseball bat, and a ripstick. Obviously, the fact that these items were left behind is much more disturbing when you consider the history of the house. It's heartbreaking to imagine that some of the toys lying around the floor possibly belonged to the girl that Vincent Filia had stolen. Throughout the rest of the house, several objects and pieces of furniture, including the bed in the main room, look like they were placed there much later than 2006. It's possible that the house was occupied by squatters, but because it was empty at the time the footage was shot, it's impossible to know what belonged to Philia, his common-law family, his victim, and the squatters. Thankfully, after being reunited with her family in 2006, Elizabeth went on to live a fruitful life, and the man who committed the heinous crime against her paid the price for it. Yeah, he's right. Uh, you just don't know what stuff is uh, squatters' belongings or the kidnappers' stuff. Also, I'm glad that this guy did not encounter any strange people in here. Holton Avenue is a notoriously creepy abandoned street in Cleveland, Ohio. In 1913, the first Hungarian Baptist church was built on that street, eventually falling into disuse and being left abandoned like the rest of the buildings on that street. In April 2016, the body of a woman named Jessica Coleman was found there after she went missing, but unfortunately, her attacker was never found. In July 2023, Chris Hill went to the location to record footage of the abandoned church, as well as the rest of the buildings on Holton Avenue. From disturbing graffiti to broken glass and peeling walls, the church checks every box you would expect from a creepy abandoned building. As he ventures into the basement, Chris finds signs that someone else had been inside the church, including... Yep, it'll be checking off my list. As he ventures into the basement... The basement is another thing I would have somebody with me to go down with, because I don't know if I want to go down there by myself. 
Chris finds signs that someone else had been inside the church, including an action figure of Melvin the Giraffe from Madagascar that he mentions he doesn't remember seeing the last time he visited the location. Knowing that he's often not alone during his explorations, Chris set up several cameras throughout the church, and about 10 minutes into the exploration, one of the cameras on the main floor captures something pretty creepy. What? I saw that. Obviously, doors don't just randomly shut themselves, and as it wasn't particularly windy that night, it's clear that someone was in the church with Chris. But after looking around for a bit, he can't find anyone in the church, and decides to head back outside to explore the rest of the buildings on Holton Avenue. If the church was in a messed up state, some of the houses are even worse, with most of them looking like they could collapse at any second. Around half an hour into the visit, he decides to explore one of the most dilapidated houses on the block. And as he's in the basement, the exploration takes a scary turn. It actually looks like it's just underneath the house. It's not really a basement. It's a little creepy. Oh, If you hear a noise like that, get out of there quick. Oh, crap, crap, crap. Sorry. It smelled like I knew somebody was in here. I don't even want to be in this neighborhood at nighttime. It, it just looks like somebody can come out of any corner and attack you. As he's exploring the basement, a sound can be heard coming from the ground floor, and when he goes back up to find out what it is, a person pulls back the curtain. Immediately apologizing, Chris runs back out to the street, and that's when he realizes that despite the horrible state of the supposedly abandoned house, there was actually someone living in there with electricity. Clearly most, if not all of the abandoned buildings on the block were housing people now who didn't want him there, something he never encountered on his first visit. And with this newfound discovery, Chris called it a night. In February 2020, urban explorer Rhythm Rider explored an abandoned house at an undisclosed location with his exploration partner, Zay Clark. According to Rhythm, the house used to belong to an old woman who had passed away. Right. In complete contrast to most abandoned houses, most of the woman's possessions had been left untouched, indicating that the house had not yet fallen prey to looters and squatters who often take things that aren't theirs. All throughout the house, the two explorers find everything from beautiful tableware and silverware to... Yeah, this stuff right here, I'm surprised nobody didn't take them and sell them from scrap metal, you know, like for the silver. If they're real silver, that is. Ornately woven tapestries and the fully equipped bar. Based on the calendars they found in the house, the property hadn't been occupied since August 2018. Just a few minutes into the visit, Rhythm and Zay find something incredibly sad and disturbing. What? We're worried about something like this happening, um, and then it did. When we walked in here, we took a few steps in the door, and we saw this on the ground. What is that? Now, for those who can't figure that, <clears throat> excuse me, figure out what that is, that is a body stain. And you can see right there, there's a walker. So, unfortunately, it seems that the woman who had lived here had taken a bad fall, landed on the floor, <clears throat> and that's where she expired, unfortunately. Uh, uh, it's extremely, extremely sad to us. That is extremely sad. I was hoping he did not say murder because of the stained blood and stuff. It took us a good 20 minutes to uh, decide what we're going to do here. And, um, you know, despite... It's feeling weird. We figure we still need to tell the story because this is a good reminder to everybody that you need to check on your loved ones. It seemed this woman had passed and was laying here for God knows how long before she was found. So check in on your loved ones, guys. Right in the middle of the hallway, a human body stain can be seen on the floor next to a walker, indicating that the old woman probably had a bad fall and couldn't get up. Sadly, she passed away and her body decomposed before anyone could save her which is a terrifying way to die. 
There appear to be signs that the woman's family members tried to sort through her things after she passed away, but overall her various belongings are in perfectly good shape, including her bathroom supplies which were still there at the time of the recording. It's hard to watch the footage without having conflicting feelings. Even though the house is beautiful and you can easily tell that the woman who lived there with her husband was a talented, outgoing person, it's incredibly sad to see how she met her end. Overall, the footage should serve as a reminder to check in on your loved ones every time you get the chance, because nobody deserves to pass away like that. Since 2020, Rhythm with Ryder hasn't gone back to that location. Okay, everybody, that was my reaction to Six Most Disturbing Abandoned Encounters Caught on Camera by Chillin' Scares. And at first, when he showed that uh, stain on the floor, I thought it was an actual dead body. <laughs> because it's so prominent right there, you know? And the fact that he even said that the body was found decomposing, that really is sad to hear. But anyway, that's gonna be it for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on post notifications for more chilling scares content like this. This has been another successful installment of the Tin Man's Corner Channel. I'm your host, Jeffrey Tin Man Taylor, and I said it's rapping. Have a nice day.